Peter Brightwell is going to give us an update on the state of NMOS. Oh, and Thomas, it's a tag team. So Thomas, we've got a lot of slides to get through. So let's and go. And hopefully the clicker works. So let's go. Um, so Thomas Edwards, Peter Brightwell. Uh, I think we should get on. I think. Let's go. So uh, we've done that. Uh, the specifications. So I'll be covering uh, briefly what NMOS is about the specifications themselves. Uh, you may notice some new numbers there. Where we are with the state of those specifications and, and implementations, what's happening next. And um, at the end, we're going to talk about uh, NMOS and the full stack, something that's uh, it's, it's a uh, hot topic at the moment in, in the industry. So the answer to the question, network media open specifications. Uh, this is about how we tackle the, uh, I guess you could call it the control plane, uh, the, the part that is missing between the part that sits above these parts that are provided by the SMPTE specs, 2110, 2059, 227, to uh, eventually achieve all this functionality over here. How do we connect, discover things? How do we connect them? How do we achieve some measure of control? How do we monitor things? How do we uh, make all that secure? And how possibly, um, how do we plug these different parts together? Which could be either locally, but it could also be over a distributed system, could be, could be, on, could be a, even in the cloud. So just, so just back to the previous one. Um, who knows about uh, JSON, REST, WebSockets, message queues? Uh, a few people. So these are technologies that are basically, uh, this is how the web has developed. It, it makes huge use of all these things. There's huge uh, expertise and resources out there. So we are trying to build on these in the work we're doing in AMWA. So NMOS there. Uh, if you turn around, then you can, see, you can see this, but you don't have to because it's on the screen here. NMOS is the, the, uh, the, the orange layer in the network and resource management that enables the green layer of the uh, dematerialized future. So cracking on, uh, discovery. This is about how it's an essential part of any large scalable automated system is that you don't have to type in lots of IP addresses or even IP host names because you're going to be plugging things up and down all the time. You're going to be spinning up VMs. It's all going to be very dynamic. Things are going to change. You mean I can't use an Excel spreadsheet? Damn. No. <laughs> Damn. Not, not that we've done one here. We haven't done one here, have we? No. All right. no. Okay. No, it was a Google Sheet. So. So. There's a... Now, if you look around um, the, the industry, there are various ways of doing this for people have proposed, so I won't mention any product names, but I'm sure you know some of these, but they are basically proprietary approaches to discovering s certain aspects of net networks infrastructure. Uh, that's not, yeah, we're both end users. That's not really good enough for us because we want the ability to uh, be able to choose the best of breed based on what they can do, not because they happen to do, to uh, have implemented this particular uh, proprietary thing. So it's very much about uh, defining the APIs for registering and querying resources. And you can get, like all the other NMOS stuff, you can, it's, all, it's all available, it's open, specification, the yeah, of NMOS. It's available on GitHub. This is what everybody uses for open source software, and we're using it for open, open source specification, effectively. So uh, some of you will have seen this before. You, you plug something into the network, it, it then registers itself with that thing called the registry, and it then um, applications or clients, monitoring devices, they can query that registry and know what is on there. And you can see, if you look over to the left there, um, I think, I'm hoping to have a slide coming up of this later, but I, I put it in the last minute, so it may not be on there. You can see uh, behind those people with their backs to you, it's uh, one of the registers that we've got so you can see all the things that are on the, in the room advertising themselves with ISO 4. So once you've found things, you can then connect them. 
and by having a open protocol for connecting things, we sort of move us away from uh, relying on particular broadcast controllers, um, specific ways of doing this sort of thing. So it gives, again, gives us more flexibility as uh, customers, gives the industry more flexibility to, to develop in new ways. It's not something that 2110 defines. 2110 defines the uh, STP information the, that describes the flows, but it doesn't say what to do with that. It just says you can do something with that to join your things together. So what we've done with ISO 5 is uh, use an API to connect senders and receivers, and that's the basis of um, higher level fun and games you can have. So the nice thing about this is it's not tied to 2110, so if we uh, dash uh, 20 or 30, so if we want to do something uh, later, suppose we want a, a compressed flow, we it will work with that. Suppose we want to have some other type of connection, I'll talk about that in a bit, uh, we can do that as well. So how does it work? Um, imagine that's a camera or, or a, an IP gateway, I, I guess now. Imagine that's a, a multi-viewer PIP. Uh, imagine this is a, a connection controller. So the sorts of things you're seeing over there. This will announce itself to the registry. This will announce itself to the registry, or sorry, register, it's register itself with the registry. Uh, the controller will find out the big list of what's on the system. And then using ISO 5, it gets the, the STP file, that's the description of what this is going to send, and it sends it to the uh, node there, the, the receiving uh, device there. And then now, based on that, the receiver can do a subscribe to the stream. There it goes. So that can be 2110 or, or, or whatever. And it has other features as well. It will allow you to do multiple connections all in one go. That's uh, what some people call a salvo operation. So it'll allow you to prepare a connection and then activate it at a later time. Obviously quite important in many cases. And it also provides um, the ability to work both multicast or unicast and so on. So over to Thomas and uh, over with the clicker. Right, so we've got 2110 transport, ISO 4 registration discovery, ISO 5 connection management. So the challenge is with ISO 5, you might make a connection, but do you have the bandwidth to make that connection? So enterprise Ethernet switches don't drop packets. We act, we've done a lot of testing in my lab to make sure, but they don't drop packets if you do not have flows converging, which are higher than the rates of the output ports. So, you know, if they, they come in, if you have 10 gigabit ports, if you've got a 10 gigabit flow coming in one port and a 10 gigabit flow coming in another port, that's fine. If they both come out together and you're trying to shove 20 gigabits per second through a 10 gigabit port, you lose packets. And that's just the reality of the situation. And if you lose packets, your media starts getting corrupted, right? You start dropping packets and things like that happen. And we don't want that to happen. So thus, we have ISO 6. Uh, and what is ISO 6? ISO 6 is a thing which will uh, build the reserve bandwidth through our network uh, fabric in order to make sure that the media connections we'd like to make will successfully make it across our media fabric. Uh, ISO 6 is an SDN API. It's a northbound API of an SDN network controller. And there's, there's your little compass rose to remind you north of the network controller. Uh, it means you can use whichever network controller you want as long as it implements the ISO 6 API. It controls how flows move on the network. It allows the broadcast controller to determine the network topology. It allows a broadcast controller to reserve and assure bandwidth for your flows in your network. Uh, it also, to some extent, ensures network security by only allowing the authorized flows on your network. So some random endpoint can't come in and start sending flows without being previously authorized by the broadcast controller through the ISO 6 API. You know, I like to say, no packet should move on my network without prior authorization. And that's what ISO 6 can give you. 
So that southbound interface between the network controller and your actual network fabric, that can be whatever it needs to be. It might be open flow if you're an open flow house, or it might be a proprietary uh, API for your various network device vendors. Uh, but the point is the northbound API can be the standard ISO 6. OK, so thanks, Thomas. ISO 7, who here has heard of ISO 7? Oh, a week ago. What's well, brand new? A few, so. a few. Well, <laughs> so, um, well, it's about event and tally. And uh, if you come back at uh, 3.30, then you can hear David Atkins from Suits Case TV um, talk about this in more detail. Very, very briefly, though, uh, if you've got an IP network, uh, people may ask, well, how do we do camera tally? Or how do, that sort of thing. How do we, what, what's the modern equivalent of uh, G, GPIs? So uh, that's where ISO 7 comes in. It's a way of getting, basically getting um, messaging events around your IP facility. It's, it's, um, it can work in many, in different ways. Uh, different, we're looking at different types of transport. Uh, the one we, we quite like is a, a message queue based transport, MQTT, uh, which has been widely adopted in, in a lot of, uh, a lot of modern, um, companies to, to uh, send messages around, around between different devices. It's, it's, it's lightweight, fast. It's an IoT. Effective. It's like an IoT protocol, right? Yeah, it, yeah. it is, yeah. yeah. So it's very, it's, uh, very good. Um, and what we actually do, so we actually uh, route that using ISO 5. So ISO 5 has been reapplied to, uh, to MQTT to allow us to, uh, to connect to a different type of connection. Uh, so say between a... Uh, a uh, tally controller and a tally light, or well, maybe not the light itself, but the you know what I mean. And uh, this is all sort of linked up with the the uh, data model that uh, the, the content model that uh, uh, I'll be mentioning in a minute, and uh, my colleague Andrew will be talking about later. So um, at the moment, it is work in progress. That is the sort of first stage of a of a specification, but. Uh, we're quite confident about it, so we've given it a number already. Scalability. So, uh, I think there's some... So, there is some, um, maybe... Not, maybe not, misunderstanding is not the word, but some... Sometimes you may hear things questions, people say things such as, oh, it's NMOS depends on MDNS, so an MDNS doesn't work uh, at scale. So MDNS does not, is not a prerequisite for ISO 4, and in fact, um, ISO 4 will, we would recommend if you want to scale, you use something else, you use, uh, you use unicast DNS, which will allow us to have, actually be able to find a registry wherever it is in the universe because it's building on the way the web works. So, good point. And if I just step in here, so ISO 4 does have a multicast DNS solution, and that's if you've got like a random camera and a random monitor, and you plug them together, and there's nothing else, and they can find each other, right? Yep. But if you actually have a huge broadcast plant with thousands of endpoints, that, that's going to start to get a little crazy to have them all multicasting uh, to discover each other. So in that case, you can just point them to the discovery instance. Yep. And, and as, you, as you can imagine, we, you know, we've got lots of vendors and users in, in, our, in our AMBA group. People want to know that uh, these NMOS specifications do work at scale. So what, what, is, uh, what we've done is uh, there's a scalability group uh, being led by um, Rob over there from Sony, who's going to be talking about this later. And uh, Rob has simulated a network with tens of thousands of devices on. And just to check that the operation of ISO 4 and ISO 5 is... Um, Okay, and uh, we will find out about that later. Uh, so, uh, spoiler, yes it is. So where are, we with, where are we with NMOS at the moment? Specification wise, ISO 4, 5, 6, they're all done, published. They're out, out there, you can get them off of GitHub. Uh, there's some nice documentation now. ISO 7, like I say, work in progress. 
There's actually three versions of ISO 4. Uh, we're on to version 1.2, which is the one we recommend everybody uses now because it, it works well with ISO 5. If you're doing an ISO 5 connection, which is really what you want to do, isn't it? You want to connect things, you use 1.2. So that's our sweet spot. Uh, at this point, there was going to be a, a, an extra slide with uh, some pictures from over there. So in terms of things that there are, uh, have a look around here. Plenty of these things do, plenty of these things do. Um, N NMOS, uh, I, the slide I wanted to show, I will just hold up this phone. Here's, here's, a, uh, here's a little uh, registry browser. All these things are different devices doing NMOS on the network in this room. So that's, that's all sort of populated dynamically based on what we just talked about. To help um, us, you know, help end users, to help developers to add NMOS to their requirements lists and their specifications and their products, we've set up a wiki in the last month or so full of uh, useful tools and tips. So it's there. Uh, one of the things on that wiki is we actually, we're starting to build up a list of available solutions. Um, you'll notice there's quite a few open source ones, so if you, uh, if you want to try MMOS for at zero cost, uh, you have a choice of lots of tools there. Um, and we are building a list of things here. These are not just people who are involved in the showcase who, are, who have um, tried it. They are people who are putting things in shipping code, and this will increase over the, 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 uh, the, the coming weeks. So do take a look there. So quickly on to what's next. Uh, firstly, piece of work we're doing on grouping. So ISO 5 will let you switch multiple things together, a bulk, a bulk connection. Sometimes you might want to do that in a way where you say, I want to switch all these things coming from this camera, or I want to switch all these things do a salvo to this multi-viewer or whatever. Um, that is aided by tagging each sender and receiver with a little uh, thing saying, I'm part of this camera, I'm part of this multi-viewer. So there's, there's a project being uh, led by uh, Grass Valley who are working on that. So that's going to be a small extra specification. It's an add-on, you don't have to do it, but if you want this functionality, you can do it. So this is a general pattern, if there's little extra mini specifications coming on. So another one is for audio channel mapping. So if you want to, a common thing we want to do, say in BBC Cardiff, is to select audio uh, that is Welsh language or English language from a multi-channel group. So uh, rather than add this sort of thing to a, the ISO 5 specification, which what, we would, what we're going to be doing is doing a little extra one to uh, we're going to do this very quickly over the next couple of months uh, to allow this, you know, people who are concerned about this not to be concerned because it will be there. Identity time, very important. Andrew is going to talk about this in nine minutes, so I will skip over. Testing, also very important. Uh, we are building some open source tools, which I think we would like to be having hosted by AMWA on the AMWA's GitHub. So uh, build on lots of work that's happened in the past, bring it together, have, um, have us make it easier for people to just get going, test things, make it easier at our workshops to, and uh, interrupts to just say, yes, this works, this works, this works. Could be the start of a certification thing, but that's a uh, business decision. So I think it's over to you now. Okay. So we have defined these APIs within the Advanced Media Workflow Association. However, some of you who you know do business IT may think, hey, should these be secure or should we just you know have them in plain text HTTP? And obviously, these should be secure. And we should be using the best practices from the IT industry in order to secure these API calls. Uh, the challenge is we want to make sure that all the different vendors who are implementing the ISO 4, ISO 5, ISO 6 are doing it 
uh, in a secure fashion in an interoperable way, right? We don't want someone doing security in one fashion and it doesn't work with someone's device uh, doing security in another fashion. The interoperable API security group has come together in order to take a look at how we can use HTTPS uh, with TLS, uh, public key infrastructures, uh, OAuth, and JavaScript web tokens in order to have this interoperable security solution between different vendors. Uh, we've put together a draft specification which has now just been released on GitHub as well. Uh, and we're hoping to try to finish this up in a, just shortly in just a few yeah. months. Also, if you, uh, if you were here on Saturday, you would have heard our colleague uh, Simon Rankin present on this. If you weren't, uh, I think his presentation will be going, uh, be sent out to those who've registered for this. So, you know, the promise of IP has always been you swipe your credit card and then you spin up your broadcast channels, right? We always want to, we like to get to this situation, right? So the, 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 the challenge involved in this is that, uh, you know, SMPTE 2110 is a great start, but SMPTE 2110 is just a transport on the bottom. As we've mentioned, you know, we have ISO 4, ISO 5, and ISO 6. The problem is we need to ensure, and we're users, we need to ensure that vendors are going to give us the full stack, the whole kit and caboodle of what we need for this to work. So, you know, we want to get to a world where you take a system and you plug it in, it DHCPs an IP address, it finds the ISO 4 registry and registers itself, uh, it begins to obey ISO 5 connection management, and hopefully those devices also emit LLDP, which will make them a lot, a lot easier to play with ISO 6 network control functionality, or frankly, even, even a proprietary network control system mm. it benefits from the, uh, from the end devices emitting LLDP. Yep. So this is, uh, again, some additional work, which I think we're, we're considering doing on defining uh, in some more detail precisely what users expect from vendors to be a full stack solution. Next, next slide for that. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> right, media, media transport, time, uh, obeying time and sync, discovery and connection management, LLDP, and oh yeah, interoperable security that I was just talking about as well. That's yeah, yeah. also part of the full stack. So this, is, this has come out of the EBU, uh, but it is you know, si similar people with similar, similar expectations. Right, right. So I think we're on to the last slide now. So, um, well, oh, yeah. nothing more to say. <laughs> last slide. So uh, the, this lovely set of people here, this was just from our last uh, workshop at uh, Vipital. So uh, Vipital was uh, where we actually put together all this. And uh, before that, we had a, an, uh, an incubator workshop. And uh, this, these guys have made all this happen. So um, hope, hopefully, uh, we'll be seeing a lot more of this in, in kit in times to come.